Hey guys, welcome back to the channel again. This is the second video tutorial on i3. In this specific video, we are going to create some key bindings for your system and we are going to customize some other things. So let's get going. So if you follow video 8a on installing i3 on Arch Linux and learning its navigation, we can go ahead now and continue our customization. So let's start the system by hitting enter here. And if you install the display manager, you will be asked to enter your password and you will be logged in i3. But if you remember last time I installed X in it, so I need to log in here with my username and the password. And then I need to type in here start X to enter i3. There you go. Let's open up a terminal. And now we can start working. So as we've seen in the previous video, we don't have any background in our installation. If we go, for example, to workspace number two, we see we have nothing in there. So let's start to customize these and make it a little bit more attractive. So let's open up Firefox by hitting mod D to open the menu. And I'll type in here Firefox, any enter. And let's search for a nice Arch Linux wallpaper. So let's type in Arch Linux wallpaper, any enter. Let me switch this to English. And I'll scroll down the window here. Uh, let's go, for example, to this website. And let's choose one of the wallpapers. So let's see. Let's scroll down. Let's choose this one right here. Click download. We can download by clicking download again. Now I click the resolution and right click on the photo and save image. And I'll call my photo Arch. And I'll save it into the pictures folder and then click save. There we go. So we can close up now Firefox and close the tabs. Go back to the first workspace. Now, how do we set that background here in i3? So we have several programs we can use to do that. One is called Nitrogen, and I'm gonna show you how it looks like, but it's not the one that I'm going to use in the end. So to install it, we need to type in sudo pacman-s and then Nitrogen, any enter. Enter the sudo password and proceed with installation by hitting enter. So it's gonna take a moment to download and install. There you go. Now we can open up Nitrogen again with mod D and type in Nitrogen and hit enter. So what's happening here is that we need to tell Nitrogen where our wallpapers are. So we can click on Preferences and here we can click on Add a new directory and click the Pictures directory here and click Select and then confirm by clicking OK. Then we can click the wallpaper and click Apply and the wallpaper will be applied to our system. Well, this is one way to do it, but I actually prefer to do it in our configuration file and using another program called FE. So let me close out from Nitrogen and I'm going to actually remove it from the system by replacing the S here with the R. There you go. And I'm also going to remove the dependencies by typing in yay-yc. There you go. Clean up the terminal and now I can install FE by typing in sudo pacman s and then fe any enter proceed with installation and fe is installed so let's clean up the terminal now how do we use fe to put the background in our installation well first of all let's have a look at the man page for fe and i definitely recommend you to have a look at this because it has a lot of options that we can use also for setting backgrounds However, there is an option that is usually used for setting backgrounds with FE, which is dash dash PG. So we're going to use that in our configuration file. So let's quit out from here and open up our configuration file with vim.config slash i3 slash config and hit enter. Now we are already in the last line of the file. So I enter I here to go into insert mode, go down two lines and enter a comment. And this comment is going to be display wallpaper. Then go down one line, delete the hashtag because here is going to be a command. And I want to tell the system to execute. So exec underscore always, because it has to be always there, my wallpaper. And the command it has to execute is fe. And the options are dash dash bg for background dash fill so that it maintains the proportions, but it's going to fill the screen if the photo is too small. And then we need to tell the system where the photo is. So I'm going to put in here the absolute path which is slash home slash hermano slash pictures slash the picture name, which was arch dot jpg. And we can save the file and reload i3. And now let's go to workspace number two and see if the wallpaper is there. And indeed it's there. So everything went well. 
So I really like Faye. It's a very simple program. You just need to tell him where the photos are and it will just load your background just fine. If you prefer a graphical tool, then Nitrogen is the way to go. Now let's go back to the first workspace. You remember in the first video, we installed a small program called i3lock. i3lock is the lock screen for our i3 installation. So how does it work actually? Well, it works that we need to type in the terminal i3lock and this is your lock screen. So it's not particularly beautiful, but this is how it is. And to enter the password, you just start typing on your keyboard and hit enter. And of course, with the right password, you will be locked back in. So it's actually nice to have a lock screen, but it would be nicer to be able to have a shortcut key for that because right now it does not exist. We can create one in our configuration file. So let's open our configuration file again. And I'll go down again to the last line here, which is already there. So I'll enter insert mode, go down to line, and I'll type in a hashtag for a comment. And the comment will be key binding for i3 lock. Then go down the next line, delete the hashtag, now we need to tell the system that we want to create a key binding. That means we want to create a keyboard combination that we can hit and the lock screen will be activated. So how do we do this? Well, we'll follow the examples of our commands here in our configuration file, which is very simple. So the first part of the command is bind sim for combined two keys, basically. Then we need to tell the system which keys we want to combine. So we need to tell the system first is the mod key, which is the base key. So we'll type in dollar sign mod this is the variable because it represents the windows key and then a plus and we need to tell the system with which key we want to combine the mod key so this is the lock screen so let's try with the l for lock and then we need to tell the system which command to execute so we'll type in exec i3 lock now let's save the file and reload i3 by hitting mod shift r and you see we have an error here on top with a red banner so let's click on show errors and it's telling us that there is a duplicate key binding in the configuration file which is regarding the l key we just selected so we need to go back into the configuration file and change this so let's close this up and close the terminal and open up again our configuration file and let's have a look where this other l key is used so let's type in here slash and then dollar mod plus l and you can see it's used already for changing focus of the windows if you're using the JKL keys from the Vim editor. So if you don't use this, you can comment them up and this key will be available to you. But I do use it sometimes, so I don't want to actually replace it. So I'm going to use another key combination for i3 lock. So I'm going to delete this out and enter insert mode again. And let's try another key combination. Let's see, another key close to the mod key is the X key, for example. So let's try that and save the file and reload i3 again with mod shift r and now let's hit mod x and our lock screen is working fine so let's enter the password log back in and now the lock screen is active with our key binding now let's move on and work a little bit with our workspaces so let's open up again the configuration file and i'm going to scroll back up here until i find my workspaces there they are so what i need to work on here is the variable and not the workspace itself because the workspace is already set by the variable itself so i just need to change the value here and it's going to be reflected everywhere else so right now we have one to ten well this is not very descriptive so we can change this let's say for example in the first workspace i want to have always my terminals so we can edit this and we can type in colon and i'll call this terminal so let's go ahead also and say we want to open Firefox on the workspace number two. So we want to rename that. So let's go down here one line and enter again the colon and type in here Firefox. And let's say we want to have, for example, Spotify on the third workspace. So let's move down and colon and type in Spotify. Double quote. And that's going to do it for now. So let's save the file and reload i3. And you see reloading this time doesn't help much. We need to exit i3 and log back in. So let's hit mod shift E and exit i3 and start again. So by typing start X and now our terminal is there with its word. So now let's move to workspace number two. And now we have Firefox there and workspace number three. We have Spotify there. So that's fine. So let's move back to workspace number one and let's open up a terminal. So let me install Spotify here very quickly. So I'll type in yay dash s and then Spotify and hit enter. 
We'll accept the default here. Difference is to show none. Also here, none. Import the keys, yes. And now it's going to take a moment to download and install. So I'll be back when it's done. And there you go, Spotify is installed. So let's clean up the terminal and open it up. So mod D and then Spotify. And there we go. So everything looks good. Now we have Firefox and Spotify installed in our system. Now we have three workspaces, one with terminal, one with Firefox and one with Spotify. And right now the programs are opening up in the first workspace. So how can we tell actually i3 to put always Spotify on workspace number three and to put Firefox always in workspace number two? Well, let's have a look at it. Let's close Spotify and let's go back to our configuration file and let's go down to the last line of the file because we need to enter some commands here. So I'll enter insert mode, go down two lines and the hashtag for a comment. Remember comments always very important. And the comment is gonna be here, assign programs to workspaces. Then I'll go down here one line and delete the hashtag because we're going to have a command here. So let's begin with Firefox. We want to tell the system always open Firefox on workspace number two. So we can do this by typing in for underscore window, then a square bracket, then class equal double quote. Now the problem is we need to find out the class name for our Firefox program. How do we do this? Well, let's open up Firefox. And let's put it on the second workspace and let's move there, open up a new terminal and let's type in, in here xprop and hit enter. Now you might not know this here, but the cursor I've changed to a cross. So what we need to do here, we need to click on the window to get this information. So what we are looking at is the VM class here. And the one we are looking for is always the second result. So in this case is Firefox. So we can go back to the first workspace and type in here, Firefox, closing the double quotes and closing the square brackets. And we are gonna tell the system, move to workspace. And then we put in the workspace variable. So dollar sign VS2 in my case. Now let's do the same for Spotify. So for Spotify, we're gonna type in four underscore window, square bracket, class equal double quote, we need to find the class for Spotify. So let's open it up and also a terminal and type in xprop again, any enter. Click here on the window and search for the class name, which is right here. The second one is Spotify with the capital S. So let's close these windows up, go back to the first workspace and type in here Spotify. Double quote, close the square bracket and then move to workspace and then the variable, so dollar sign VS3. Then we can save the file and reload i3. Now let's open up Firefox and see what happens. You can see workspace number two opened up. If we move there, our Firefox browser is there. Let's open up Spotify. Workspace three is there, so let's move. And Spotify is there. So this is how we can tell the system to move Windows always in our workspace. Now let's close this up and also let's close Firefox up and go back to the first workspace. Let's go back to our configuration file and move up to our workspaces again. Now we have now defined the terminal, the Firefox and the Spotify workspace with a number and a name. But wouldn't it be nice to have something a little bit more cool here like an icon for example? Well we can do this, we can insert icons also here in our bar. But to do this we need to install a font. So let's open up a new terminal and type in sudo pacman dash s and then ttf then dash font dash awesome and hit enter enter our sudo password and proceed with the installation there you go now you can close this terminal up and open up firefox go to workspace number two and type in font awesome cheat sheet and then let's hit the first link and here we have a selection of icons we can choose from. So let's begin with Firefox. We are here on workspace number two, and we want to put here a Firefox icon. So let's go to Brands and hit Control F to search and type in, in here Firefox. And there you go, we have a Firefox icon here. So we can click the icon, then right click and click Copy. Move back to the first workspace and go up to the second workspace here where it says Firefox. 
enter insert mode and insert the icon. Now it doesn't look correct right now and that's fine. We need to log out from my three to take effect. But for now we can continue and also put an icon on Spotify. So let's go back to Firefox and search for Spotify. And the Spotify icon is here. So we can click it, right click and click copy. Go back to the first workspace, move down to Spotify and insert the icon. Let's do the same also for the terminal. For the terminal, we can just type, for example, also major than an underscore, but we do have also an icon there. So let's do that. Let's go back to Firefox and let's scroll up. And let's go to solid. Again, control F and type in terminal. And we have a terminal icon here. So let's click this, right click and click copy. First workspace and then enter the icon. There you go. Now let's save the file and reload i3. Now you can see the icons appear already here for Firefox. Let's open up Spotify. And it appears also for Spotify, but not for the terminal. And if we go back to our configuration file, the icons don't appear in our configuration file neither. So we need to log out from i3 for the changes to take full effect. So let's do this by typing in colon Q to quit Vim. And then mod shift E, let's exit i3. And again, click Start X. And now you can see already our terminal as its own icon there. So we can open up a terminal and go into the configuration file. And now the icons are there as well. Now, it's nice and all to have icons and names in the workspaces, but they are very small right now and are quite difficult to read. So we can change this by going up in the file. In one of the first lines, we have here the font Pango, which is going to change the font for the Windows and also for the status bar. So we can change this. Right now it's monospace 8, and we can change this in other fonts, and we can install some more fonts. For example, let's open up the terminal, and let me install the Ubuntu fonts. So let's type in sudo pacman-s ttf-ubuntu-font-family, and hit enter. Enter the sudo password and hit enter, and proceed with the installation. There you go. We can close this terminal up. And now we can change, for example, this font Pango here. I'm going to change this monospace to something like Ubuntu regular. And then I specify a font size. 8 is a little too small. So I'll bump this up to 14 so that it's easier to see also for you guys. And then I save the file and reload i3. And now look what happens. We have a bigger font on the windows and also on the status bar and now it's much easier to read so what i want to do right now is also get rid of this red bar here by clicking preferences go to profile and show title bar off there you go so it looks more coherent now we worked on our workspaces we put icons here and names we worked also on the fonts and on the background of the installation now let's work a little bit also on our i3 status so the i3 status configuration file is actually in our etsy directory Let's have a look at it. Let's type in cd slash etsy and hit enter. List the content and we can see here we have a i3status.conf configuration file. So the best practice is to put a copy of this configuration file in our home directory. But before we can do this, I want to create a directory for this configuration file only. So I'll go back to my home directory by typing in cd and hit enter. And I'll type in mkdir.config and then slash i3 status. This is the directory I want and hit enter. And now we can move this configuration file into this directory here. So I'll type in sudo cp for copy slash etsy slash i3 status. And we are going to move it in our home directory, which is represented by the tilde key and a slash and then dot config i3 status. And I'm going to call the file i3 status dot conf and hit enter enter my sudo password and there we go now let's go into the directory and list the file there so let's type in cd dot config slash i3 status and hit enter and list the content of the directory by typing in ls dash al and hit enter so this is displaying also the permissions of the file. Right now you can see the problem the problem is the i3 status configuration file belongs to root for the user and also for the group. That means if I want to work on this file, I will have to use always the sudo command. Otherwise, I won't be able to write. 
So the best way here is to actually change the ownership of the file to the user hermano and the group hermano so that I can work on it like I'm working on the i3 configuration file. So to do this, we can type in sudo chown for ownership. The user ownership has to go to me and the group ownership as well. And then the file name, so i3status.conf, any enter. Now, if we type in again ls-al, any enter, you can see the user changed, now it's me, and the group ownership also changed, it's me. So that means I can actually configure this file without putting the sudo command all the time. So we can start working now on this file to make our changes. However, we need to go back once in our configuration file of i3 because we need to tell i3 to use this configuration file because by default it's going to use this configuration file which is under the etsy directory. So let's go back to our i3 configuration file by typing vim.config slash i3 slash config and hit enter. Let's scroll down at the bottom of the file down here and you see we have a bar part here of our configuration file which is taking care of this status bar right here and right now the command here says i3 status that means run in the bar the i3 status command and this command is reading by default the i3 status.com file which is under the etsy directory so we need to tell this command to use our configuration file in our home directory so let's go here and enter insert mode and let's type in dash C for configuration. And then we need to tell I status where the configuration file is. So I'm going to type in here the full path, which is slash ohm slash hermano slash dot config slash I3 status slash the file name is I3 status dot conf. Then let's save the file and then reload I3. And now we can go ahead and work on our i3 status configuration file in our home directory. So let's type in vim.config slash i3 status slash i3 status.conf any tension. So let's begin from the top here. We have two options, colors true, and I will leave it this as it is because it shows the colors in the status bar. But the thing I want to change is this interval. Right now it's five. And if you see also my clock here, it's updating every five seconds. I don't like so much this behavior. I want to have this changing every second. So let's go ahead here and change this from five to one. And under the order part here, we can select what we want to see in our status bar. For example, I don't want to see the IPv6. I don't need this. I never use it. So I just put a comment here. And the same goes for me for the Wi-Fi because I'm not using one. And I'm going to do the same here for the battery because I'm not on a laptop. And now we can save the file and reload i3. And you can see the informations are now updated. So let's go back into the configuration file one more time and see what we can do here. Let's go ahead and say, for example, where it shows our free space under the disk, we want to have, for example, here a nice HDD icon to show as well. Well, let's open up Firefox again. Go to workspace number two. And our cheat sheet is still there. So I can type in, in here HDD. And it's right here. So I'm just going to click the icon, right click and click copy. Go back to the first workspace and paste the icon in here and make a space. And let's say I want to do the same, for example, also with the clock. Why not? Let's go back to our Firefox and search for clock. Well, this is a user clock. This is not the one I want. So let's scroll up. This one looks fine. So let's click this, right click and click copy, go back to the first workspace and paste the icon in there. There you go. It goes a space and then we can save the file. Now we can reload i3. And you can see right now we have here our HDD icon and also our clock icon here. So this is a small way on how we can configure the status bar. In the next video, we're going to go further with colors and also other status bars as well. The last thing I want to show you in this video is to how you can actually have transparency and have a compositor in your system. We need to install one because it doesn't come by default on i3. So let's clean up the terminal and type in sudo pacman dash s and the composer is pycom any enter. Enter our sudo password and proceed with the installation. There you go. Now we need to go back to our i3 configuration file, which is right here. Move down to the last line. And we need to tell also the system to use this compositor. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's move here, enter insert mode, 
and go down two lines and enter a comment. And I'll type in for the comment window compositor. Go down one line, delete the hashtag, and we need to tell the system which compositor to execute. So I'll type in exec underscore always because I want to have always my compositor working for me. And then we'll type in PyCon. And I will type in also dash F, which is going to produce the fading effect for the compositor. Then we can save the file and reload i3. And in your case, the compositor should be working already just fine. So if you're switching windows, you should see a fading effect. In my case, it's not working because I need to change a thing in the configuration file of PyCon. Let me do this very quickly. It's sudo vim slash xdg slash pycom dot conf and hit enter and i need to scroll down here and look for the vsync option because i need to deactivate that and that's because i'm on a virtual machine and it won't work with this so this is done here so i just need to put a comment here and then save the file and reload i3 and now if i move to firefox you see i have a fading effect also to my windows so everything works fine so the last touch we can do is right clicking here on our terminal Go to Preferences, then Profiles, Background, and we can make our background transparent. Maybe not 50%, let's go to something like 85 and click Close. Now I need to close the terminal and restart it. And now I have my transparency on my terminal as well. So this is going to do it for this video. On the next one, we are going to go on and customize more things, colors. We are going to install also some other programs and the file manager and many other things as well. So stay tuned for that. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. We are going to customize in the next one more things. We are going to customize also the colors to make your installation more personal. I hope you liked the video, guys. If you did, please hit the like button below and sub to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal through the website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.